What's good people? How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below. Smash the like, hit the bell, those things help out a lot. YouTube does notify people when we got new uploads, so make sure you hit that bell so you get notified. Anyway guys, today we got a dope episode for you because it's all about how often should I water my plants for optimal quality and yield. Perfect. Now that's a big one. A lot of people always mess that up, but a lot of people don't know that a few simple adjustments when it comes to watering can increase your quality and triple your yield. I'm talking big time and trust me because I've seen it happen myself in my own run at home. What the f But before we get into that, guys, we just gotta shout out Qualitropus Germination Booster, man. This stuff rocks. If you guys are losing seeds, then definitely give this a try. This is your solution. I've been using this for the longest time now when I pop my beans simply because I don't wanna lose any of my fire genetics. Now, I know it's painful when you lose those new beans. Genetics ain't cheap. And losing them is like throwing away cash. So why would you wanna do that? Definitely give that Qualitropus Germination Booster a try and safeguard yourself from that. Not only do you get faster seed starting, I'm talking tap roots within 24 hours, long, nice, white tap roots no cap but it also eliminates viruses funguses and with all these viruses going around nowadays it's always a good idea to start your seeds off right you guys know even if you touch your seeds with dirty fingers you can spread viruses and your plant just may not grow right it'll grow a little finicky and off you probably still get to harvest but it just won't be as good as it could have been because it's got an inherent problem now now a lot of people have different views when it comes to touching seeds directly but just give that quality of germination booster a try and eliminate all those issues and hit that discount code i can thc and snag a discount on everything on their website you know i got the i can fam cover now without further ado let's get into today's episode Yes, guys, so the multi-million dollar question, eh? How often should I water my ladies to get the optimal quality and yield? Well, good question. And truth be told, there's no one-size-fits-all solution here. Now, determining the ideal watering schedule for your girls can be influenced by various factors such as the stage of growth, the growing medium use, environmental conditions, and even the genetics that you've chosen to run. But I got a few general guidelines for you guys which will definitely help you guys out with getting the optimal quality and yield. Right. Now, first off, you gotta pay attention to the stage of growth. Are you in a little baby stage? stage or are you in a big stage? Are you dealing with a little baby seedling or do you got a whole big girl? But stage of growth is super important and that'll literally dictate how much water you use. During the seedling stage and really early veg you can use less water but as things progress and the ladies get bigger the watering needs will increase. As you progress on into veg they'll typically require a lot more watering as they grow rapidly. Now as you go into flowers sometimes you might find that they consume a whole lot more sometimes you might find that the watering may reduce slightly but it still remains consistent all the way up until harvest. So what stage of growth you're in definitely dictates how much water you want to use. Now stick around till the end because I'm going to give you guys a tip that'll take a lot of the hand water and out of your equation and also maximize your Perfect. use. Now number two, we got growing mediums. There are lots of different mediums out there. I'm talking soil, cocoa coir, peat moss, hydroponics, all these things retain water differently. Personally, I've found the soil retains moisture a little bit longer than things like cocoa. So in that regard, soil grown plants generally require less frequent watering. Now third up, environmental conditions also play a part. Factors like temperature, humidity, and airflow can affect the rate at which you water your plants and the rate at which water evaporates from the soil or the growing medium. Higher temperatures and lower humidity levels might increase water consumption. Whereas if you flip that around, it may decrease that water consumption. And number four guys, differences in genetics. Genetics. Different genetics have different water requirements. Some genetics may be more resilient, some may require less water, some may require more water. So from what I've said so far, you guys may be realizing that there's no secret sauce when it comes to watering, but there are definitely a few guidelines that you guys can use. So here's a few of them. For me, I try to avoid overwatering. That's a that's a surefire way to your plants. I only water when the top inch of the soil feels dry. Sometimes I just stick my finger in there. I'm talking about 2.5 centimeters in. Pause. Bruh. But I do that to check the moisture level. Also, sometimes it's just the good old method of lifting up your plant pot, seeing how heavy it is, and putting it back down. That can really help you determine how much water is in there. Sometimes I do prefer to go with a less is more approach just so I avoid that overwatering. Overwatering can lead to things like root rot and other issues. You want to make sure that the containers have proper drainage so you can always drill a few holes in the bottom if you think the drainage is an issue. Now when you're watering your plants you do want to water thoroughly. Sometimes it's nice to have a little watering can with these little preferred holes so that you can get a nice even water all around there. Just lightly water over top first so that when you come with the heavy water it can 
actually go down into the medium. A lot of you people know that when you water in a fabric pot, the water can just bounce straight off and then run straight off through the sides of the pot mm. and ruin your entire grow room. But you do want to water thoroughly. You want to make sure that the entire root zone gets moisture. You don't want any dry spots in there, any massive dry patches. You're just watering on one side only. That's counterproductive. Bruh. It's literally better to water deeply but less frequently than to water shallow and frequently. And I sort of learned this the hard way because I got some drip irrigation systems set up and those drip irrigation systems usually water frequently, as frequent as you want, but it's all usually in one little area. You want to make sure that the entire root zone gets moisture so your plants are healthy. Now you can also adjust the watering frequency based on the plant's response. Healthy plants may need less water while stressed plants may need a little bit more attention. Now while there's no one size fits all, a good rule of thumb for many folks out there is to water every two to three days during the veg stage and maybe a little bit more or maybe a little bit less during flowering depending on the factors that I mentioned earlier in the video. But all that said, it's crucial to monitor your plants individually and adjust the watering schedules based on their specific needs. Now if you really want to optimize your quality oh, no, and yield when it comes to watering, then definitely look into some sort of automatic system. There are a lot of options out there. There's blue mats, there's auto pots, there's real growers buckets, shout out to my brother Scotty. There's the AC watering bases, Mars Hydro, dip irrigation system, there's so many options. And personally I found my plants look so much happier and I'm seeing nodes pop up and I never saw nodes before simply because their plants are on a routine and they're not relying on my high ass to go inside there and forget to water them because I always forget shit. When the plants are able to access water on a routine without being overwatered or underwatered, things are really nice. So drop it in the comments down below and let me know what you guys watering systems look like. What do you guys watering routines look like? Do you guys water all the time, less frequently? How do you guys do it? Do you guys got automated systems or no systems? Or you guys like me, you got you do a little bit of both. You still go in there with the hand water and you got some drip irrigation system set up. Drop in the comments down below and let me know. And don't forget, if you guys want to join up with the ICANN VIP Bean Club, then definitely do that. We always got fire bean drops going out and you guys can grab some of that fire. So hit that link in the description below and join up with the ICANN fam. And if you guys want to learn more about growing that fire, then definitely check out any episode on screen right now, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, fam.